<laughs> the Hidden People contains mature language, content, and themes. Please listen with care. <laughs> Dayton Riders Movement presents The Hidden People, starring Jordan Lopez, Stephen Gogol, Sean Gunther, Xander Hildenbrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Luna Madison. Season 1, Episode 3, Official Statements, written by Stephen Kallenberg, directed by Chris and Megan Burnside, also starring... Norb Wessels. Detective Mulligan, audio log. Three days after the Thorn murders. The medical examiner is still completing her investigation, so in the meantime, we're going to interview four people to see if they have any information. The victims, two adult children, McKenna and Thomas, and McKenna's co-workers from the local music store. All but Thomas saw the Thorns the night they died. I don't have any other leads yet, so I'm hoping to gather more information through these interviews. The sad, pointless investigation continues. This one bores me, and her companion, Officer Ronald Sitwell, reaches alfy levels of insufferable. As with all agents of the law throughout history, they hear what they want to hear and find what they want to find. Justice is such a self-serving endeavor. Hey, partner. Sorry, am I interrupting something? Hi, Ronald. No, I was just, um, recording some thoughts again. How is it looking? Well, everyone's in place. We have McKenna and Thomas in the two interview rooms. And then I had to get creative and cleared space in the break room for Alfred O'Toole and the storage room for Nissa Sif's daughter. The radiator in the storage room is so loud. Is that the best we can do? Well, while the acoustics in the bathroom are weirdly impressive, I figured you'd rather take loud radiator over loud flushing. Fair enough. Also, I lost a bet over the weekend and had to bring in pastries. Danish? No thanks. I crash after sugar, and I need to be on point for these interviews. Suit yourself. Your way is probably healthier, though. I keep losing these bets and bringing in bad food, then I'm the only one who eats it. Pretty soon I won't fit in my uniform. You know there's a solution to that, right? Yeah. You teach me to be a detective, I get promoted, and I don't need to wear the tight uniform. Or you could stop betting. Or I could start winning. I'm not sure we'll get the funding to add another detective, but keep at it, I guess. So what are we aiming for today? You always say to have a purpose? What's our objective? We need official statements from everyone. I didn't get much from them the day they found out. Hopefully their shock has worn off enough that their memories are clearer. I've known Thomas for a long time, so I think that will go well. I'm not sure about the others. That McKenna character never really seemed shocked in the first place. She definitely acted defensive when she was last here. Agitated. I mean, she had just found out that her parents were murdered, but still, it was an odd reaction. Maybe she just doesn't like cops. I've heard some people don't like cops. Could be. I'm going to start with her and then let her sit while I talk to the others. Maybe we'll get a peek at where that agitation comes from. Hello, McKenna. Thanks for coming in again. How are you doing? Can I get you anything? I'm fine. Seriously, are you warm enough? Can I get you water, something to eat? 
We have danishes this morning. Lots of hospitality for an interrogation. Just an interview, McKenna. Not an interrogation. Potato, tomato. Does that mean you don't need anything? I'm good. Okay. So, how are you doing? You asked me that. You didn't answer. I know. Well? Well, my parents just died. I know this must be hard. Have you slept? A little. Right. Are you- Look, I know what you're doing. Being polite and thoughtful to put me at ease. I watched the first 48. Just save yourself some time and ask what you brought me here to ask. I already told you everything I could think of. I know this is frustrating, but it's not uncommon to have to go over stories multiple times. New details sometimes emerge, even if you don't think you remember anything else. I just need to confirm a few of the details. What time did your parents leave the house that evening? About six. You said they went to the show at 8 p.m. and then went out for drinks? Is that correct? That was the plan. From the ticket stubs and the bar receipts we found in your mother's purse, we estimate they finished the show and went for those drinks at around 1045. Okay. Do you remember what you were doing during that time frame? Sitting at home. Alone? No, and yes. Alfie and Nissa were over for a while. You've asked me this before. I'm just trying to make sure there aren't any blanks we can fill in. You all were there the entire night? Yes. No, wait. Alfie left to get food for us. What time did that occur? It was probably 7.30. He was only gone for about 20 minutes. And what time did they leave, approximately? Your friends? Around 10. When did you realize your parents hadn't come home? I guess not until Thomas told me the news. I don't normally hear them return. Why not? I said this. I live in the basement with my own entrance. You can't hear the upstairs from down there. I like it that way. They once went on vacation for a week and I didn't even notice. And you can't think of anything else unusual about that night. Do you have a pen? I'd like to keep track of how many times you ask me if I can think of anything else. I'm going to go chat with your friends a bit. Sit tight. I'll bring you that pen when I come back. How'd it go in there? Did you get anything? Not really. Same details as before, mostly. Alfred O'Toole did leave to get food, but it was much earlier than the attack. Did she give you anything else? I'm more concerned by what I haven't seen from her. And that would be... Grief. Is she a suspect? I have no evidence that she is, but it's like she's trying to be suspicious. Maybe the others are thinking more clearly and can provide some background on the thorns. Maybe they had enemies. Why don't you help me with the interviews? Really? Are you serious? Let's go. <laughs> so close, and yet so very far afield. The thorns died at the hands of their own flesh and blood. But you won't learn about that by talking to Thomas. Do you think he even knows the real McKenna? That she's ever revealed her true self? Hi, Thomas. Sam, what is going on? Did you find anything else? I'm sorry. It's protocol that we go over your story again, to make sure there weren't any details left out. I understand. And whatever I can do. Thomas, this is Officer Ron Sitwell. Officer Sitwell is helping me with the investigation. I'm really sorry for your loss. We'll try to keep this brief. Danish? Uh, no, thank you. So, you're from this area? Originally, but I currently live in Eastbrook, about an hour from here. Oh, I have an ex from Eastbrook. I hope you don't know her. So, did you visit your parents very often? I come up here to have dinner with them every few weeks. Did McKenna typically join for those dinners? Not often. She and my parents aren't close. Um, they weren't close. I don't see her around much. She kind of just does her own thing, you know? I gathered that. Does she typically follow their schedules pretty closely, though? I honestly don't know. Maybe to keep track of when she knew she wouldn't be bothered. They have a routine, though. Had. Sorry. My dad, he always called it the best rut in his life. That's sweet. He was a good man. The best. Do you ever think that McKenna resents being at home while you were able to move away? I don't think so. I guess I haven't given it much thought. I don't think she had any reason to seriously resent any of us. I'm certainly not suggesting she would. Just trying to get a feel for the family dynamic. McKenna didn't ever try to move out. She never even brought up the idea of moving out, at least not around me. She told me that she can't remember much about that night. That's odd. She gave you a lot of information just the other day. 
Does she frequently forget details, lose track of things? Not at all. She's smarter than she lets on, at least to most people. Maybe she just doesn't like me. I'm sure that's not true. McKenna just doesn't take well to responsibility. She's irresponsible? No, that's not it. It's more the commitment aspect of responsibility. Like, she walks or bikes everywhere. She doesn't have a car, doesn't even have a license. Too much responsibility. And you think she just doesn't want to be responsible for this? I'm sure she doesn't want the investigation to hinge on what she remembers. That's a lot of responsibility. I see. I hope that if she does know something, she still tells me, regardless of the responsibility. She will. Trust me. At the very least, she'll tell me, and I can tell you. That's really helpful, Thomas. Thank you. Sit tight for just a bit longer. Why did you lie about McKenna not remembering? McKenna is holding back. With details and with feelings. We need to know why. And we needed to find out if Thomas would be straight with us or cover for her. He gave us personal information that made her seem immature, so he isn't completely blind to her faults. And he agreed to tell us things she shares with him. Which shows that he trusts us, right? Exactly. Are we looking for the same things with her friends? We do need to see if they'll lie for her, yes. But we also need to know how they saw the thorns. Are you suspicious of them? Not specifically, but someone did this, Ron. Some person or persons. This town has a finite number of persons in it. At least one of them is a killer. When you look at it that way, mathematically, the odds that you're talking to a killer are actually pretty high. Much better than playing the lottery. Time to scratch off the lies, pick four of the suspects, and double-doubler their asses. See? There's a line. It's right here. And there's you. Way, way past it. Line? Ron. Sorry. I will try harder. Try so much harder, Ron. Hello, Alfred. Just Alfie. I'm Detective Mulligan, Alfie. We've met before at the Thorns, back in high school. This is Officer Sitwell. We've got some questions for you. Where were you when the Thorns died? You mean the exact time they died? How would I know when that was? You shouldn't lead with a trick question. You should lull the suspect into a false sense of safety first. Uh, not that I'm a suspect. I'm Nissa Sif's daughter. I remember you. Sorry about the radiator being so loud. I'm a fan of white noise. So you were at the Thorns the night of the crime? Is that a question? More setting the stage. We know you were there. Then why ask? I didn't. Did you see the thorns before they left? How did they seem? Briefly. Small talk about the weather. Mr. Thorne asked me how it was outside. I told him it was mid-50s, but the low for the night was 41, so he decided on his long wool jacket rather than the leather one. You remember all of that? I don't forget. Ever. They were still getting ready when we showed up, but they left pretty quickly. Seemed fine to me. How long did you two stay? Until um, ten-something, I guess. Nissa got sore about losing three rounds in a row, because I always dominate three-player board games, so uh, we called it an early night. Did any of you leave the house for any reason? Only when Alfie went out for pizza, he drew the short straw. What can you tell me about Thomas? Oh, you mean Golden Boy? Why do you call him that? Thomas? He's everyone's favorite. Teachers, parents, friends, you name it. He's smart and handsome, successful and charming. People love him, and those who don't only don't because they envy him. What can you tell me about Nyssa? Um, tech genius. She is the world's greatest hacktivist. Hacktivist? Yeah, a uh, hacker activist. She's like a two-time hackathon champion or something like that. So she's a computer hacker. I mean, wait, uh, shit, um, no? She's not like a hacker per se, it's more like she, um, hacks. I mean, but not, like, uh, bad stuff? It's more like, you know, um, did I say hacker? I meant slacker. She is so lazy. Like a sloth. What can you tell me about Alfie? I could tell you his favorite lightsaber color. 
Could you be more specific? Was Alfie fine that night? Nothing unusual? I feel like I should ask for a lawyer. Nissa, you know that you're here voluntarily. I'm not forcing you to do anything. And yet you keep asking questions. I'm just trying to get insight. But you could be looking for a fall girl. Small town cops are sketchy. Alfie made me watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know stuff. You think we're sketchy? Have you heard that radiator? We are not in Texas. The nearest chainsaw is probably in a hardware store a mile away. But the massacre, that's the thing I'm trying to solve. I need your help. I want to cooperate and give you what you need. It's just... Nothing out of the ordinary happened that night. I guess I'm just freaked. I, I still can't believe this happened to my friend. It's okay. Take your time with this. It's scary. Do we have your permission to ask a few more questions? We all put on the tough guy Girl. Act. Tough girl. Which is not an act. Sorry? What's your relationship like with Alfie? Are you just friends? Or... Incredibly, a man and a woman can be friends while harboring no romantic feelings for each other. Also gross. She said what? Rudy McRude face. You go back there and tell her I told you the fried chicken story. The what? Just do it. She'll know what you're talking about. And then wink and say something like, your secret's safe with me. We're not going to do that. Oh, wait. What's the fried chicken story? Okay. Alfie, so does Mac have any other friends? Who else does she see on a regular basis? Uh, not really. We're a pretty exclusive crew. Um, we did make a new friend the other night, but that was after... You know, after what happened. Were the Thorns involved in any controversial activities? Anyone they could have made upset? Mrs. Thorne could get loud when she was fired up. She was the I want to speak to her manager type. But not in an obnoxious, overprivileged way. She was always nice to me, but I could believe she pissed some people off. She had a little feud with the neighbor over the ash tree. Feud? It was years ago. The neighbor moved away in 08. That's quite a memory. Would you like to know what day of the week it was? Did that neighbor have any dogs? A little dachshund mix. <laughs> Alfie used to say that a little wiener lived next door and that he had a dachshund. <laughs> he's... he's not really that funny. But he grows on you. You haven't seen any dogs on the loose, have you? Like, not in someone's yard? I saw a Maltese in a woman's purse last week. But I don't go out too much other than for work and to hang out with Nissa and Mac. Where do you normally hang out? Usually Max basement. When you're in the basement, how well can you hear upstairs? I mean, not too well, but you could hear stuff. It's not like it's soundproofed, but it's pretty cozy for a basement. While we're on the subject of McKenna, how's she handling everything? She seems okay, I guess. All things considered. Max's preferred way of dealing with things is to not deal with them. That doesn't seem healthy. What? I've been trying to emulate her lack of dealing since middle school. Imagine a world like that. Late for work? Pfft, whatever. Get dumped? Put on some music. Overwhelmed by paying your taxes? Just ignore them. You realize that in all of those scenarios, the consequences happen whether you deal with them or not. Ah, <sighs> the bliss of ignorance. Does McKenna have many of those issues? Late for work? Recently dumped? Money problems? This is our manager, so we're late all the time. We take advantage of her friendship for personal gain. You're not allowed to tell her what I say, right? We're not your therapists, Alfie. Well, if it's a crime to call in sick when you're not sick, then lock me up. Don't, uh, don't actually lock me up. Why do you keep on asking questions about McKenna? We've asked about a lot of things. The last six questions have been about her. Don't you want to know if I ever heard her parents fight or if Mrs. Thorne had a guy on the side? Did you? Did she? Hmm. I don't like where this is going. You said I was coming in to clarify the timeline of events. I've done that. Now I think you just want to hear negative things about my friend without asking anything to the contrary. If I only provide negative details without any of the positive ones, I can make anyone sound evil. Mother Teresa. Gandhi. Obama. <laughs> Would we really put Obama together with Mother Teresa? Lawyer. What? I want... A lawyer. All the questions and that was the one? Nissa, you know we're not charging you with anything, right? 
That's three questions since I asked for a lawyer. One more and I will own this entire building. Do you know who my father is? That was intense. And revelatory. Yeah, it was. I mean, I know what I learned, but what did you learn? We learned that McKenna lied about not being able to hear things from the basement. That's true. O'Toole said you could. More than that. It was what everyone had in common. Their defense of McKenna. Everyone makes excuses for her. Why? What about McKenna Thorne needs protecting? Have you changed your mind about her being a suspect? We didn't get any new evidence. And maybe this is all a lot of nothing. Maybe she's just a needy slacker who lucked into some good friends. Then again, would a slacker take the time to train attack dogs to murder people? Are you going to go back and talk to her again? Yes. I don't think pissing her off is the way to go, though. It will only turn all the others against me, and we may need them later. If she needs to be protected and coddled, then that's what I'll do. You want me to join this time? No. I want you to go review the evidence from the scene. Maybe you'll notice something I missed. Really? Yes, Ron. Really. And some advice? You want to be a detective? Believe that you can actually help. And act like you believe it. Sorry to keep you waiting, McKenna. Did you bring me a pen? No, but that's because I don't intend to ask you any more questions beyond seeing how you're doing. I know a good therapist if you need to talk to someone. I have a therapist. Oh, okay. Are you feeling safer at home with the officer watching the house? We can keep someone around as long as you need. You should probably ask Thomas. He's the one who's concerned that killers are going to invade. You're not? If they didn't break in to hurt my parents, why would they do it to hurt me? I leave the house sometimes. If someone wants to kill me, they would have plenty of chances where I'm unguarded. Would you like the officer to escort you to and from work? You're not getting it. I'm not worried. No reason in the world for someone to kill me. There doesn't seem to be a reason someone would kill your parents either. Look, are we done? Of course. I'm sorry to have wasted so much of your day. If I can do anything to help or you have any- I have your card. Thanks. I can't believe you said, do you know who my father is? Nissa, you don't even know who your father is. Which makes it a legitimate question. I know who your father is, Nissa. I'm glad you felt comfortable enough leveraging your non-existent family fortune to defend me. She threatened the cops. Nissa, your badassery knows no bounds. The people who enforce the rules still have to follow them. That's good, because otherwise, Sam would already have me in jail. But she has no reason to arrest you. For one, you didn't do anything. She thinks I did. She has zero evidence to support that. She's just fishing. Don't take the bait. Yeah. Hey, who wants to watch Serpico? Today felt more like the usual suspects. Mm, I would have gone with the naked gun. <laughs> the, the cops aren't that stupid. They are if they think you're a suspect. Alfie, she has nothing to worry about. They don't think Max a suspect. So, McKenna's the prime suspect. We don't have a suspect yet. But if you had to choose now... This is a murder investigation, Ron. I don't have to choose now. That's how murder investigations work. Sure, sure. But hypothetically... Did you find anything among the evidence? I'm not sure. Nothing, really. I did think the blood was weird in this photo, though. It was pulled all around her, but it ran in straight lines on her coat. What? Where? There's blood everywhere. No, look, right there, on the coat near the shoulder. It's the only part that isn't completely red. Oh my god. What? Where is that coat? Here, holy shit, Ron. What is it? If you just buried a huge blade in someone's torso, you couldn't just slide it right out. You'd need to pull really hard. And you'd need to brace the body so you didn't pull it too. The killer stepped on the body to hold it down while they pulled out the weapon. This pattern is a shoe print. We have the killer's shoe size and a tread to match. Ah, uh, the news draws ever tighter. 
One bloody step closer to figuring out the truth? Are you as prepared as you think you are? <laughs> Dayton Riders Movement presents The Hidden People. Executive Producers Chris Burnside and Megan Burnside. Producers Alexa Fett Fisher, Stephen Kallenberg, and Jordan Lopez. The Lead Writer Chris Burnside. Story by Anna Adamy, Chris Burnside, Megan Burnside, Alexa Fett Fisher. Stephen Kallenberg, Jordan Lopez, and Carrie Zahn. The sound engineer was Dan Seavers. Sound design and score by Katie Seaton. Theme song and additional music by Michael Yates. For more of the Hidden People, visit our website at hiddenpeoplepodcast.com. Ha ha ha.